Okay, so new beginning for us in chess. We're focusing on a different level of play with the same concepts delivered, hopefully with a little bit more oomph and punch to them. Because being like advanced level players, they play the basics better, more consistently than the lower level players. That's all it is. There's nothing magical or, or mystical about it. So we have our base system, which was the answer, which we ca which carried us through for a consistent delivery for many, many, many periods. Zero to 1600. So we're now taking the series through to the next level, the 1700. Nice and steady, we're in no rush. We're not showing off with anybody. We're just basically practicing these tools. So let's have a look. Nothing changes with the targeting. Bishop's attacking this pawn here. The knight wants to come here. Shall we just do this just to prevent the knight from coming here? Like I said, nothing magical, nothing mysterious. It may be one of the big failings of people wanting to progress in chess where they, they expect that something needs to be different. There's a magic wand that occurs when you hit a certain rating. There isn't. It's just a consistent way of working a good solid base system. If you're not working a good solid base system, then you'll probably stay plateaued at um, a reasonable level, say 1300, 1400 if you're that level, or even 1200, or if you're happy being like an 800 person. Um, if you want to plateau at that level and you're comfortable playing at that level, then there's no issues, no problems. Um, there's no way I'm slagging off anybody because I just love playing the game of chess. So. If you are wanting to improve and you are wanting to increase um, your level of play, for me, the only way is to improve the quality of your play. It's not about adding more information in there. It's about the quality of the play. The answer process that we've worked through helps me to deliver a better quality of play. So it's about just maintaining and continuing the use of that and really after evaluation of games really look at improving and developing going forward nothing new there is there it's taking advantages of good openings good attacks it's just keeping the basics I really can't specify it's having good basics Queens come down we do have this square here for the Knight Knight can attack the Queen what's the Queen come down there for that's always the question I mean the bishops blocked here pawns blocked there is he going Queenside castle in it just looks a bit funny doesn't it so I'm going to bring the knight here single attacks really aren't really very good but it looks a bit clustered around his this area here so I think we can take the opportunity find out what he wants to do with this queen So the only difference that you'll see, well for me, the only difference I've seen in the, my development of my game is being able to look at the weaknesses that I had when I first started out, especially in over the board games. And that was like 2013 when I started over the board. I was playing online for a long time before then. And my area was around looking at the end game 
because I had a good opening, good mid game, I had really good positions, etc. Um, but then the end game really did let me down in my early games. So I, I went and did that. I studied loads of end game stuff. I did all the tactical stuff, all the strategic stuff, any anything, anything to do with end games, I covered. And that's helped me improve my own end game processes going through. Hence, like the end game opening underneath the uh, the answer process. Simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board. It's all there. It's all simple stuff. It's got an X-ray through now. Well, looking for attacking our knight here. We could block in our bishop, or we could develop the bishop here. It's attacking this pawn twice. So I think they're probably going to go queenside castle now. Just to add a bit more protection to the pawn. Yeah. So the protection they've added to the pawn is the king. The king usually isn't that strong in these sort of circumstances. But I can't get to it at the minute. And my king hasn't got castled. So to all intents and purposes feeling a little bit airy. So I'll just bring my bishop out here, look to challenge his bishop on this side. Obviously he's not going to trade, he's going to want to try and open this pawn here in front of the rook. One of the key things is, um, for me, as I'm going through the levels, not that I'm really in, into the rating stuff, the quality of the stuff, that's the reason why I've decided to jump onto the, the 0 to 1700 now, because I've been... I can hit the 1600 mark on many websites um, quite easily. Um, when I say easily, yes, it's um, it's been a, it's a good journey, and so we can we can get through working with the methodologies that we've got up to that level um, without breaking much sweat. So there must be something in that, and so this is why we're doing this set for 1700. Um, felt fairly comfortable with 1700 for a while. And this is why we're doing the 1700 series. So I'm not going to do a, a series that I I have no experience in. You know, I'm not going. I'm not purporting to say, well, this is how you should do it, and this is how you should do it. This is how I'm saying. No, this is how I am doing it. Yeah, and if it helps anyone else to simplify their method of learning, or it adds into what they're doing, then all well and good. Whoa, that's a big knight move going back. Am I happy to see that or not? He's making space for his pawns, is he? Something doesn't feel right. So I'm just going to attack the bishop here while we... Because we were going to anyway have to go and castle, I believe, get the king safe. A lot of congestion around his king here for a moment. So he's gone out maybe to come back in. Oh, it's going to be attacking our knight, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's a basic thing of coming back here and coming here to attack the knight. Okay. Yeah, so all the aspects of the end game opening, you know, targeting towards the king area, if you can, the weak squares, the weak pieces, all of those, they're all there. They're all still there. We've not, we're not suddenly jumping into a, a whole new system now because we're talking about 1700. Um, we've talked about 1600 for a long period of time. So, let's keep up that base, keep that basic information. If we have to, building a different sort of psychology into how we operate the concept, then all well and good. But the concept itself has been tried and tested and we're comfortable with it. It's simple, it's direct, it does the job. It's not actually brought the knight down, it's protecting here. Like I say, he wants to open up the space around our king. So if our bishop takes, the pawn takes, and then he's got space to attack our king area. All a bit shifty, really. Knight can come here to attack his queen. He can take with his knight. It's a bit unfortunate that knight is not a bishop. I think I'm going to do that. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece helps to rock the boat a bit. And maybe the less pieces he's got, less pieces to attack our king area 
unless we're going to go Queenside Castle. So you'll see no difference in the way that I'm playing per se. The mindset might slightly be different in the choices of things that I'm actually going to attack. They may look a little bit more, um, what's the word now? Uh, advanced, I would say. Yep. Um, up to the 1600, that I, that I think the difference for me is I've been holding back on doing the fancier type moves so that we don't get ourselves confused. So the attacking the king area, oh, he's not actually taken that either. What is going on here? He's jammed in his queen. Knight can take, his pawn takes, so he opens the pawn up there. I think I'm being set up, but I'm taking the knight while we're thinking about it. Because it's towards the king area. It's opening up a pawn around the king area. So it's a good idea. So yeah, I mean, the fancy stuff only comes in when it's absolutely necessary. And it is really just more about the maximum we would go to in our calculations up to the 1600 would be four you know a four calculation at, at the least and that's good enough you know it's good enough for the ordinary duo it's good enough even for advanced level players because you know we can get caught out basically going too far in advance but the, i think the difference from the 1600 to the 1700 in the thing that we're working on is that little bit of further calculation yep so taking it probably to eight if you can but the problem you've got is and you, i'll always say is that the opponent doesn't have to do what you've calculated unless of course it's a forced check on the king and the king has to move all the rest they don't have to they could sacrifice their queen for a better foot position that's the type of thing i'm talking about so the out to come back in if we took this um pawn here and put a check on his king his king just mosey on here so then i don't have a safe square to come back at, back out again because his queen is protecting this square go here the king comes nothing to protect the knight as far as we can see but you know what See, see this pawn here this is why that probably that knight's come there protecting this pawn interesting so if we take he puts the check and he goes here take his bishop and he's going to take with the pawn although really yeah he's going to take with the pawn because he's going to open up if he takes with the queen we can do a bit of an attack there i'll tell you what we're going to do i've got a piece under attack he shouldn't then go and attack another piece really hmm. if the bishop takes though it's on his queen and his queen is behind the king so it's going to take uh, if only my queen could get a little bit over there but i'm gonna have to move the knight aren't i i don't really want to move the knight i feel there's something here but i'm making it up because there isn't anything bishop takes say the queen takes although i do believe this is going to be the pawn but either way one of them takes yeah it's because the queen doesn't have anything to do with the story over here <laughs> okay let's be basic and bring the bishop knight back <laughs> there's nothing there so yeah that further calculation thing um it'll be a hard one for me to really push myself to push that boundary but only if they are proper forced moves that's where i'll take my um calculation over the four 
and that's where in the 1700 area that's the only difference and that's what I should be attempting to try and do bishop can look to actually attack the rook but obviously it's going to get simply defended by the pawn pushing down here again we could make space for our king to see whether or not we're going to kingside castle because his pawn is coming down on us anytime soon onto the bishop yes let's take this bishop first because he's doing he's, he's, he's like a, a tortoise he's just creeping up hmm we're gonna have to make some space we need to get our rooks into action we need to get our pieces jazzed up or else we'll be falling toward you take with the pawn yeah looking for that access point so we can put a two on one his queen's defending there his bishop's defending there as well Uh, du -du -du. you can see where I'm going see if I can catch him king side attack all his pieces are on the other side of the board that should be to our advantage he does have the pawn pushing down for the queen protecting and his queen has gone to the other side so we are going to take advantage of this opportunity it's not a big advantage because he can go there and protect so I don't know why I'm getting excited but it's something knight can come here come to here and then we've got this access and the oh oh what's going on let's get the knight up let's get the knight up comes here puts a check on the king and he's um too late to the party way too late excellent lovely focus targeting uh they've asked for a rematch um i'll tell you what i'll take a break on this one and come back